So jump to the wall here, and today we've got a Saving a Disaster battle playing as Karaza Karak, defending Karaza Karak against Scabby Eye, which confederated Wurzag. So Wurzag's not part of the Bloody Hands or Grimgore's Ard Boys. He's over here. So that's interesting. Anyway, uh, it seems like it's... If I had to guess, I'd say it's a Tier 4 defensive settlement, and he's got a few units that I think were maybe standing outside. It's not... He's not allied with Barak Var, which... Ah, uh, he must be recruiting over here. I see, that's that's the force there. Now, that's actually quite useful, because what we could do is actually deny reinforcements, and the important units are still going to be there. However, there is another thought as well. Karazo Karak is a really easy-to-defend settlement if you know what you're doing, and that's really what the crux of what I want this video to be. If you know how to defend your settlements as dwarves, you can handle um, armies of this size. Um, that being said, you can still get overwhelmed, as my previous live streams uh, have, have shown as well. Anyway, so we're actually going to control Large Army because I want them to charge at me with everything they've got to begin with so that we can offload the Grudge Throwers, which will do area of effect damage. So bring them on. But the most important thing to note as the Dwarves is to utilize choke points. You have to. Um, the... The towers in Dwarven Settlements are not very good at all. Even at Karaza Karak, holding onto walls is not a good idea, tactically speaking. There are better options. You can hold the walls and still win in some cases, and maybe it would be possible to hold the walls here and win. But this is actually one of the most defensible cities in the game. Not the most. The, the, the best defensible city is actually um, Black Crag that style of settlement. There's a fair few settlements like that, with that same layout. Um, and the next easiest to defend is actually this one here. And there's nothing in there that is actually really good at dealing with this particular defensive position. And what makes it so good is that it's hard for the AI to get in here, especially with melee-focused armies, because there's choke points everywhere, and they just can't do anything but charge at us. And that's what we want them to do. Now, Really, what would be better in the garrison is to have more single entity units like Thanes, because they're they're ideal for holding the enemy back because they don't obstruct your missile units. So what we want to do is just keep as many units in reserve, especially the high quality ones. They'll probably send some guys round the round the sides, but for the most part, just yeah, keep them safe. Got to make sure these guys here are protected. So Wurzag's got some magic, and we'll have to keep an eye on that. When he shows up, we need to snipe him straight away. Uh, luckily, he doesn't have Foot of Gork. AI tends not to give him that, which is really weird. Uh, we could put the Thane up here temporarily, because they don't have that many fast units. Well, actually, they do, but it'll take them a lot longer to break through there anyway. So we could activate one of the towers just temporarily, especially over here where their reinforcements are coming in. So, let's see, speed... Uh, let's... Okay, I'm just going to use a Dwarf War, it doesn't matter if it's not the fastest unit, because if it does get caught, it's the least important. I think I can trigger three of these towers. Yeah, I can. We just got to get the r exact right spot. Nope. A bit more of it this way, please. Nope. Just... Come on, we can get it perfect. There, and... Okay, that'll activate all three towers. And you can stay... There. And yeah, we don't want to be aiming at the siege towers, because towers... Unless... Okay, there are some tower... Some fort towers that can destroy siege towers. Dwarven ones can't. The ones that can are Lizardmen, high tier ones that shoot the Sunbeam stuff, and um, Rattling Missiles and uh, Warp Lightning Cannon. So rat uh, the rats are actually the best at dealing with Siege Towers. So, see how much damage this does. I don't expect it to do a lot, but it's better than nothing, and it'll... I don't know, we'll see how we go. So Wurzag's trying to pop a few spells down, and mostly missing, which is good, because he's... Okay, he's already used a Power Stone. That's, really, that's actually really stupid of him to use that right away. Did he miscast? Or was he already damaged? Let's 
So yeah, we, we weren't using this efficiently. Doesn't matter, just get just get a couple of kills and then we'll just run back. So we've killed the equivalent of about one full unit, and that's enough. Let's just go. Get back. Oh right, I was like, what the hell? I don't remember them. I was like, oh yeah, the reinforcements. Alright. Of course, the reinforcements. Um Also, um, it's on legendary difficulty. I, I shouldn't have to mention that, but... Oh, well, I did. What's the battle difficulty, though? Yeah, very hard battle difficulty. If you're wondering how I know, just by, like, checking that, if you hover over the morale button here, do you see how it says difficulty modifier 10? That's very hard battle difficulty. So if it was at 4, that means it's on hard. If there's no bonus, it's on very hard. And if there's anything else, it's probably easy. So I think it's like minus one on easy, but I'm not sure because I don't get many save files sent in on easy difficulty. Alright, now these guys here, just make don't make them shoot just yet. We want to make sure that they're clustered up. Thanes and Lords are really good at holding greenskins back for good long times. Long periods of time. Um I don't want to have too many of them here, because it might actually direct more of their troops out this way, and I don't want that. I also don't want to crowd up this area too much. Alright. That guy there is expendable because he's part of the garrison. This guy here is an actual lord, so we'll use him second. You might be thinking, why not shoot? Not yet. Not yet. We've got limited ammo. He doesn't have any of the stuff. Just, just wait. It's okay. Okay, we've got to make every shot count. Alright, now we can shoot. See, when they get into melee, they clump up. Which means more kills for me. I don't need to use the guns right now. I don't think. Or should we? I don't know, if we're too conservative, that could be a bad thing as well as... Alright, I'm gonna fire well. Alright, cool. Okay, okay. Handgunners need to get rid of the Goblin Wolf Chariot. Okay, you hold them back. And we'll start shooting with this. Anyone come around the sides? Nope. So, they've already killed 100 between them. And this is far more valuable than the walls. As long as they don't get in here. So the spiders will be just a little bit of a concern. Good. See how they like cluster in like this? This is what we want to see. Oh yeah, give me that. We just don't want to use the melee infantry because they'll block our shots. With the gunners, we don't want that. So yeah, if he gets killed, it doesn't matter. So keep him in there, fight to the death. That guy there is the one that actually matters. See, the Quarrelers use up their ammo pretty quickly, so it might be a good idea now to just stop. Because, yeah, on Legendary Difficulty, you cannot rely on melee infantry to, uh, to dish out their worth in damage. They will never do it. Especially against Greenskins. You have to rely on missile units. Which is why the walls can't be utilized. Because it's it's really obstructing for missile units. They miss a lot. Unless you get like the absolute perfect shot, which is really hard to do. But anyway, the perfect shot's right here. There's no advantage to the defender holding the walls. There's no reason to do it. Alright. So 
slow down for a bit. All right. So one thing you want to do with dwarfs, uh, as early as possible, research the extra ammunition for thunderers, quarrelers, and grudge throwers. That'll really help you in the uh, in these defensive sieges, because one of the big problems with the, the dwarf settlements um, is that you just run out of ammo. Okay, we don't. It's nasty skulkers getting to us, but they're just bypassing us here. Like I said, send the melee infantry over here, but they'll just obstruct us. Okay, being a bit annoying at the moment. Alright, time to do some more as the next wave comes in. Alright, just, just keep that there. Biggins will rip through our miners, but just got to delay them for the time being. Focus on this choke point here because it's really good. Gun should be focusing on the armored units. Where is Wurzag? So, and also another thing is that if you put your guys up on the wall, there's Wurzag. Um, the the catapults, there's they got like no chance of hitting them, and they're gonna get the most kills in, in this. Okay, stand back a little bit more. Alright, Longbeards won't be able to fight against uh, Biggins indefinitely. He's gonna go soon, but we still got this guy. There's Wurzag. Aim for him. Everybody aim for Wurzag. No more magic for you, bitch. Even though he's only got Brain Burster, that still does damage. See, now this unit of uh, hammers is kind of in the way. Ignore them for now. Focus on here. It's going to take them forever to get through here. That's why you want to use the choke points. They just can't dish out damage fast enough. Okay, looks like he's about to cast again, but he's almost gone. And he's gone. Cool. Stop. Alright, uh, the next biggest concentration seems to be coming through here. Alright, get that hammer over there. Oh, I did still love. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what I can do with you right now. Hmm. Well, we've got time. It's going to take them ages to get through here. I just don't want to waste ammunition. Because I think we've got this. We just need to make sure... We don't waste ammo. Because our ammo is worth more than their lives. As in their lives. Actually, worth more than their lives. For sure. It's like, these miners aren't going to do shit. So yeah. Poorly armored units, use the quarrelers. Heavily armored units, use the guns. So probably should be using the guns on those big ends. But the problem here is that we are a little bit obstructed. Okay. All right, I'm gonna get these guys to come over here. I'm gonna shoot into this. All right, they got they got some flappy boys over there. Hang on. They got through us. Not sure if I can shoot over their head. We'll see. Because biggins are... Yeah, no. Yeah. Alright, so what we're going to do in this case here is sort of create a gap. Alright, 
Oh, there's running out of ammo. Okay. Might hit our own troops, but miners versus biggins. A worthwhile sacrifice. And just hold that position there. And now we can actually shoot into them. Might get a little bit of friendly fire, but it's okay. They're heavily condensed. And there's the army losses. We crushed them. Yeah. So basically, the way that the AI beat a Dwarfen garrison is, is basically by throwing so many troops at you that you run out of ammo. Once you've run out of ammo, as the Dwarfs, that's it. It's like, it's over. Um, unless you've done enough damage to them that you'll inflict the army loss penalty eventually. So that's why every shot you gotta be very careful about. Because you can get, like, look at that, loads of kills on them. And that's without any upgrades on, on them. Anyway, that's the end of this battle. So utilize your choke points when defending as dwarfs. Now there are some settlements that are easier to defend than others. Some settlements are very difficult to defend, such as um, Karak Eight Peaks and Karak Izor, because of the there's no real choke points in that settlement. There's so many ways for the AI to get in. Those are probably the most difficult settlements to defend. Um, so just be be aware of which settlement types are what. The easiest ones are Karaza Karak, Black Crag. I can't remember all of the settlement types off by hand in the layouts, but those ones are very easy to defend. Um, so yeah, that's in this one. Well, let's just let's just have a look at the campaign, see how it's going. Oh man, you had an army there as well. So you're playing as Grumbrindle. And how's the situation? Oh, oh, okay. So you got black cra Oh, that's not good. Oh, okay. So that situation there, you probably will lose because like, you, you only get like a handful. Oh, and the damage as well. You had to protect Black Crag at least until the walls were built. I mean, it's only tier two, so it's not that big of a deal to lose it. You rebuild it fairly quickly. And Barak Vars out here. What happened to Grimgore? Oh wow, holy crap, this is his last settlement. Yeah, finish him off. Okay. Well, it's not going great. Not going great. I mean, in my dwarf campaign, I certainly had some setbacks as well. It's not easy, but I don't think you got that much trouble. I mean, none of these greenskins are a lot stronger than you. You, you do have a fair bit of money. That's a lot of taxes. Um, you've got this at, are you going towards tier 4? Okay, so that's going to be even easier to defend soon. you got to start building walls up in these settlements. Uh, are they at war with, yeah, they're going to take that before you do, which is, that actually really sucks. Unless. Yeah, you really don't want them here. Nah, they don't want to confederate. And you get tons of money as well, but there's no way you're going to get there in time. Um, they've probably got a f you know what, I reckon that the, that Grimgore will actually lose there. I reckon he'll actually lose. And, uh, yeah, so here's what you do. Take this out first, P probably just auto-resolve it. Get over here, get ready to take Mount Squeakhorn, because I think, assuming, assuming that his armies are here, which we don't know if they are, um, because it doesn't say there's any military, there is some military presence, but usually they crowd around the settlement as well. Uh, there's only miners in here anyway, from the look of it. I reckon Grimgore will win there, and then you you take him out. Because Grimgore will get a chance to attack them first. Um, it would also be a good idea to go into ambush stance, probably, probably be about here, if you can. Because if Grimgore sees that you're nearby, he might not make the attack there, because he feels like, oh, if I attack these stunties, then... I'm not going to be in good enough shape to deal with these. So you want him to get overconfident. Get rid of Barak Vars forces, which is which is going to be useful to you because they might confederate. Um, I don't know if that's actually good. And then take Mount Squidhorn, and then you're probably going to have to to retake Black Crag because you just didn't get as defended in time. Uh, it is what it is. I know it can be tricky. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and hope you learned something. Don't forget to leave a sub, and I'll see you next time. Fuckers.